Tonight's story is about Burma, a British company called Premier Oil, and Robin Cook. Now, and Robin Cook, we, I've got to say, oh great, we're amongst friends, hooray! <laughs> Burma, I mean, what can you say? Um, it's a military junta there, it's one of the most repressive regimes in the world. Aung San Suu Kyi won the democratic elections and then was promptly fucking in prison. Um, they've got extrajudicial killings going on all over the place. The regime in Burma is so bad, so bad, that Britain does not sell arms to them. <laughs> we wanted to meet, you know, a representative from the Burmese regime. So we thought, well, let's phone up the Burmese ambassador. You know, so we phoned up and said, hello, we're a television company. Wondered if we could do an interview with you. We just wanted to provide you with a platform to uh, express your views. And it's a great honour to be here talking with the Ambassador of the Union of Myanmar, His Excellency, Dr. Wynne. Pleased to meet you, Dr. Wynne. Pleased to meet you, Mark. Thank you very much. We've got, just if I may, we've got some gifts. I know that sometimes oh. it is, it's traditional to give gifts and we've brought... Oh, very kind of you. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Wonderful. We've, this is, um, we've got here, this is a traditional British yes. uh, food. So you must, oh, you yes. must eat this today. Right. Um, I understand that you're... Uh, appointment has been fairly recent to London. That's correct, yes. And so this is, this is called tripe, and this is um, a traditional food that is eaten particularly in the north of England. Is that so? And uh, we've got the best tripe for you. Really? <laughs> uh, and this is, the best way to cook it is, is to boil it, let's see. So we've bought, we've bought that. Maybe it might uh -huh. be an idea to refrigerate it if, uh, yes. if that's at all possible. Right. If I could hand that to, to one of your assistants, if we could oh, refrigerate it. Really, also... Very... I was. Oh, very nice. I, I've I've been told that the people of Myanmar are very very big football fans. Yes. And um, we have some people who are friends of ours who have managed to to get this. I wonder if I could just give you this. This is the. And and if you yourself you aren't a football fan, I'm sure that there'll be someone I, who can appreciate it. I certainly am. This is. But my my children are even bigger fans than me. Oh, are they? Well, this is this is the Manchester United strip. We've got my a full goodness. strip here, and I'm quite proud of this. We've managed to get it signed by David Beckham and his wife. Oh, my goodness. So my son's going to be crazy about this. This, this is his... This, this is a name that I hear almost every day in the home, you know? That's right. This is, well, this is Beckham and his wife here has just... She's just put posh from her, from oh, her, her stage note. <laughs> I just had visions of the embassy that night. Tripe, ambassador, you are spoiling us. <laughs> my mom has this perhaps... As a nation, it is a new nation, a developing nation, from the womb. That's quite right. You know, like trying to offer the best and the most nutritious kind of food. You know, that is probably the most nutritious kind of food for an adult to a newborn, like you were mm. saying. The young infant will not be able to digest any solid food. I mean, not even so a steak if, or a chop that we yes. don't appreciate very much. As so if else. the West tries to impose its values, it is in effect feeding solids to a baby, which is completely inappropriate. Yes, this is the main uh, point that I'm having to put up to a lot of people out here. And at the same time, you know, Eve, because of the cultural and philosophical differences between the East and the West. Just hold it there. This is the recurrent theme, the cultural differences. And whenever you talk to regimes like this, like the, like the Burmese regime, and you try to get them to explain the human rights abuses, the argument they always come up with is they say, ah, the West just don't understand the cultural differences. Oh, it's culture. It's culture, fine. Like the Welsh have got male voice choirs, the French have got cuisine, and Burma's got the National Army All Formation Torture Team. Fine. <laughs> fine. You can't say, oh, it's cultural differences. Because the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is universal. It's not regional. <laughs> you know, otherwise, you know, serial killers in Britain will be commuting to fucking go to work. <laughs> you know, just over to Burma, love. All right, have a good day. <laughs> get back. What's it, what was it like? Oh, it was murder. And the journey, very bad. <laughs> How important, on a scale of one to ten, 
is internal security? Oh, I would put it almost absolute at this moment. Because we... So nearly a, t- a 10? Yes, nearly a 10. I would, I would put it nearly a yeah. 10. Yes. And it is, it is to be sought yes. uh, to extend an olive branch of peace. But for that olive branch of peace to be effective, in the other hand, you need to have a machine gun that will actually be there to force them to accept peace. Because you cannot just say we will be peaceful and let insurgents rise against you. In a way, <clears throat> Mark, you are, you are very right. For the olive branch of peace, for the carrot, if you like, the yes. reward, you have to have actually used the stick of law and order. In, and in you, our you case, this that. has actually happened in mm. practice. And for people to take the carrot, they often have to be beaten <clears throat> to actually get them to yes. force to take the carrot. That's the reality. Mm. Do you think we should be frightened of that reality? Well, I don't think uh, being frightened uh, doesn't really bring in any benefit. You just have to be practical about mm. things, face the situations with courage. And you know he was talking about internal security. One of the big threats to internal security was there are two comedians in Burma and they were sentenced to 20 years for telling jokes. A sentence to 20 years for telling jokes. That's a fuck of a heckle, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I've been heckled there 20 years. <laughs> Shame when cousins marry. Ha <laughs> ha, 30. <laughs> just 20 years for telling a gag, man. You know, that's, that's incredible. That's kind of, you know, what we should do, I really believe that we should do this, we should start to heckle the Burmese ambassador. En masse as a nation. Start at the top, right, because the Queen gets to meet him. Right? And Prince Philip, he'll say anything, won't he? <laughs> you know, I'm pleased to meet you, Ambassador. I've shagged your mum. <laughs> in, in the supermarket, will the Burmese ambassador please leave the building as his moral turpitude is actually upsetting the shoplifters? <laughs> is it 20 years, man? For that sentence to be just, that joke had to have killed somebody. <laughs> it's just got a, a Burmese bank robbers going to the bank, give me the money, get on the floor, that's a dead parrot, it's not dead, it's pining, I'll do the whole routine. <laughs> you know, how dangerous is this? If we can go back to the analogy of the baby, yes. sometimes you have to force feed the carrot. Yes, you're right. When certain groups and certain sections of Western society try and deny Myanmar's right to defend itself and Myanmar's right to equip itself for internal security. It seems to me they're very short-sighted because if the West is saying to the security forces in Myanmar, you cannot have this gun, you cannot have this equipment, then that means that security is compromised. If security is compromised, Mm. that could mean people actually die as a result of that. Yes. And it is quite important to actually say if you don't get the guns to the soldiers people die that's true that's true especially uh, when you're having to deal with these uh, terrorizing acts of sudden mm-hmm. desperate insurgents they're, they're almost taking the carrot yes. out of the mouth aren't that's they? right that's right the danger of allowing people to actually vote for whoever they want regardless of the consequence yes. is immense it's almost patronizing yes. to to force the vote upon them exactly right and in southeast asia this system uh, has been already in existence in thailand mm. and in indonesia because at this time they just don't feel that the political maturity of people mm. have reached that stage where everybody ought to be elected. I remember when we were filming this, when he starts talking about, you know, the comparable regimes, including the military and democracy, and he cites Indonesia, I did think, when I get home, I'm going to phone up the Indonesian embassy and just say, look, I know you've got a few problems at the moment, but the good news is Burma thinks you're a role model. (laughs) If I could use the analogy of a plant, that democracy, whether it be eastern or western, is like a plant in the living room. You need to tend to it, you need to care to it, you need to clean it, you need to water it. Sometimes if the plant is sick, you need to turn the heating up. Sometimes you need to cut back on the water if you've given it too much. Yes, of course. But you also need to prune it. That's right. You need to clip it. You You need to make sure that it knows where it is, 
that it doesn't expand everywhere. Yes. And that 